Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to take a look at moment of inertia and how that compares to regular inertia that we've talked about and rotations, okay? So let's do a quick review. Inertia, we know, is related to mass. And inertia was a tendency to resist the change in motion. So things with a lot of mass didn't want to change their motion, which means it took more force to get them to accelerate or to slow down and that kind of stuff, all right? Applying that concept to a rotation now, we call that the moment of inertia, all right? Um, the difference here is, what is the tendency of an object when it comes to rotating? Well, it's kind of like the same thing for inertia, where an object that is not rotating has a tendency to not want to rotate, and things that are rotating have a tendency to keep rotating, okay? So if you have more moment of inertia, that means you're going to keep doing what you were doing before in terms of rotations. Now, what we look at for moment of inertia is not just the total mass that we have. That would be the easy thing to do. But unfortunately, it's not the whole story for us. For moment of inertia or rotation, it's the mass that exists, but also the distribution of that mass. Now, what I mean by that is, if you have different things that are rotating, where is the mass located? How close is the mass to the axes of rotation? That kind of stuff. Um, one thing that we often compare is a disc, a ring, and a sphere with that. So here's a quick little video that we're going to show you that shows you um, the difference between those two things. So it's called the great ring versus disc race. Here we go. Okay, so here's the same idea, but now they include the sphere. So if you watch it again, I'll try pausing at the very end here. Back up just a little bit. Notice how the sphere hits first, then the disc, then the ring. Okay, so looking at those three objects, what that means for us is that as they rotate, that the sphere must have most of its mass located close to its axis of rotation. The disc would have more and the ring has the most, which would make sense because a ring is mainly empty space. So the ring has all of its mass to the outside, which means it has a higher moment of inertia. It's not any more mass, but the distribution is further away. Okay. Now, gymnasts know this because if they're doing a rotation that's a layout, a pike, or a tuck, they need to use a different amount of torque on their bodies to get them to be able to handle that type of rotation. And if you're tucked in tighter, like here versus here versus here, it's easier to actually have that rotation happen. Okay. Same thing happens with figure skaters, um, divers, anybody who wants to twist and turn their bodies they have to have a sense of how their how tight they tuck their bodies and how fast they get themselves to rotate or to 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 roll over okay we start applying this idea to momentum and rotational momentum we call that angular momentum okay so it's a momentum something has due to its rotation versus the normal momentum of things moving left right up or down in linear fashion okay with angular momentum it's going to depend on the speed of rotation so how fast is it rotating and the moment of inertia? Not that really different to regular momentum. Remember, regular momentum is dependent on the mass of something, kind of like the moment of inertia, and its velocity. Well, this is the angular velocity. So it's the exact same scenario, but now we're just dealing with it rotating. All right? One thing we need to be aware of is that angular momentum is conserved in any rotating object as long as you're not putting a torque on it. So as long as you're not putting power to it, of some sort, you can serve that angular momentum on that object. What that does for us is once we get something moving or rotating, it's going to continue to rotate until some sort of force acts on it. All right. Now, friction will slow things down and stop them. We know that. Um, however, we can actually change the speed at which something rotates. All right. If we take a look at this, if we can somehow increase the moment of inertia, we can slow it down. 
if we can decrease the moment of inertia, we can speed it up. All right. This is something that figure skaters have figured out really well. Okay. I've always been amazed how a figure skater can go from skating a relatively smooth, wide arc on the ice, jump in the air, and instantly be spinning at hundreds of RPMs. Okay, that just doesn't, that kind of blows my mind actually, until you start applying this idea of the physics behind it. Okay, so let's take a look at a figure skater who actually set the world record in terms of how fast she could get herself to rotate. Here we go. Now notice what she does. She starts out with a good rotation and her leg is really far out wide. Her arm is really far out wide. So she is keeping all as much mass as possible to the outside while using her legs and her core and her strength to get herself rotating relatively quickly. Okay, So she's generating torque right now and she's creating a lot of angular momentum. Okay, But her moment of inertia is high because she is very wide in her stance. She's going to change that shortly. At this point, she's tucked in some, but not completely in yet. But you've already started to see that she's moving much faster because she's brought her mass inwards, so she has decreased her moment of inertia. As a result, because angular momentum is conserved, her velocity is going up. Now if you look, besides a slight bend in the knees, she's pretty much just standing still. So she's generated all of that speed from the initial torque, and shifting her moment of inertia inwards. And as a result, she ends up at 308 RPMs, which is crazy fast um, for a rotation. I'm pretty sure I'd fall on the ice if that happened to me. Okay? So that is what we're looking at in terms of this idea of angular momentum as things rotate around. Momentum is still conserved, but the difference now is changing momentum, moment of inertia versus angular velocity. Here's one last slide to kind of put it all together of the last couple of things we've talked about. First thing, we need to remember that all objects rotate about their center of mass. Second thing, the farther the mass is distributed from the center of mass, the harder it is to change its angular velocity or its rotational speed. Okay. Now, the reason why is because you get that further away, you distribute it outwards, it has a greater moment of inertia or this tendency to resist rotations. Okay. As your moment of inertia decreases, your angular velocity is going to increase. The reason why those happen is because your angular momentum is conserved. When this happens, you can bring the mass closer to the center, it will speed up. If you bring the mass farther from center, it will slow down those rotations. Okay? Ultimately, this all comes down to one statement, is that the moment of inertia and angular velocity are inversely proportional with angular momentum being conserved. Okay? All right, guys, that finishes up. We'll do some more practice with this when we get back to class.